Camilla Cabello, not going to be headlining any festivals this year, but uh, not, not a lot of people are going to be headlining festivals this year. Nope. It's, uh, a, lot of, a lot of major festivals have now dropped their 2018 lineups, including Coachella, Governor's Ball, Firefly, Boston Calling, Shaky Knees. Um, Bonnaroo. Yeah. Yeah, Bonnaroo. It's, overall, it's a pretty uh, disappointing music festival lineup year, but mm-hmm. what, what have your takeaways been so far from what you've seen? Yeah, no, I think the the takeaway has to be that disappointing because the 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 top of the line the lineups the uh, the meat and potatoes of the you know the cards it's a uh, it's very homogenous it's very um you know boring because of the lack of variety there's only 12 uh unique headliners between the big six festivals i mean it's what Eminem Jack White Beyonce Weekend Travis Scott yeah 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 Queens of the Stone Age the National the Killers uh, chain smokers, Kendrick, and Muse. That's it. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy that uh, bands like The National and Queens of the Stone Age are headlining because I know. I, I don't know. I, I know it's at Shaky Knees, which is a, a rock uh, oriented uh, festival. Right. So they're, they're their own unique thing. Yeah, but the thing is, they had such a strong lineup a couple of years ago when they got the Strokes, when only right the uh, Governor's Ball had also forgotten them. Right. So it's getting second on the Boston festival just in general I don't think although they did get David Byrne which is solid um like old time act to have number four in Tenacious D which is also like a you know yeah. exciting <laughs> like kind of what the fuck out of nowhere act mm-hmm. but overall that that lineup is very underwhelming <clears throat> you know and even Coachella which they have by far the deepest lineup this year they recycled the weekend who did every pretty much every, every major festival last year and Beyonce was supposed to perform last year, but she had her baby. So I wonder who would have even taken that spot this year. Probably would have been someone like Jack Boy or the killers expect to see one of them mm-hmm. headlining there next year. Just it's so disappointing. We've been talking about festivals and the direction that they're moving in just in general. I mean, how, how can anyone really get excited when, you see the same artists gonna be playing everywhere. Like, what's the point of these festivals if you can go see everybody everywhere? Yeah, it's weird too because Coachella actually grossed uh, like twenty one percent more than they did in twenty sixteen. So Coachella is like doing really well, very successful at the moment. But it's kind of unclear how some of the other ones are doing. Um, I think a part of it is that a lot of these fest, like at least every major festival here, has like a sister festival in terms of ownership. You know, they're run by the same place, so they're booked by the same people. It's cheaper to book the same act at two festivals, you know, than book two separate acts. So right. that's a factor. But I think a big part of it is like rap's domination and like rocks fall from grace. You kind of see it in the lack of artists because there aren't any rock acts from this decade that you'd be excited about them headlining a festival. If that was the case, you'd be disappointed that that was the biggest act, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. all the big rock acts we're seeing, uh, you know, are, are uh, Arctic Monkeys, The Killers. These are old bands. These are the only bands that have any pull, you know? So when it's mm-hmm. going to be all all rappers um, and then smaller acts, because there's only so many, you know, big bands, I don't know. It's just it's tough to get people excited. And then, then you look at the fact that um, last year, 2017, according to Pitchfork, of course, tw- across 23 major festivals, only 12% of the acts booked were solo female performers or all female groups. And you can see that again this year. There's not a lot of women uh, you know, on the cards. Um, I mean, Halsey even tweeted about it in terms of Firefly, but they're, it's, they're, they all you know, are, are culprits. So that doesn't help either. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of negativity, but at the end of the day, like, if we're booking the same few people, and most of those acts are also touring. Like Eminem, Beyonce, and Jack White are the only uh, headliners that are unique to this year. Everyone else was available to see last year somewhere. So it doesn't feel special. Yeah. And, you know, you wonder who could be headlining these festivals for female artists. You know, Florence and Machine has headlined in the past. Alabama Shakes. Paramore could possibly be headlining some of these. Um, you know, Nicki Minaj has an album upcoming this year. Maybe after that album, she'll be able to headline, mm-hmm. especially maybe like Governor's Ball or The Meadows, something like that. Yeah, uh, Gaga did last year, right? Yeah, Gaga did Coachella. Um, Halsey could 
possibly headline at this point. Yeah, she's high up on one of them, but, but not a headliner. Yeah, but you know, like in the past, you think like Katy Perry or someone like that could, but Katy Perry had a really bad year last yeah. year, critically. Um, you, you don't see her having that the kind of pull or that anyone would be like, wow, Katy Perry is going to be mm-hmm. at Coachella or going to be at Governor's Ball. So, and, right. And like, the, who are the two like big, space. big like female breakouts last year? Probably SZA and Cardi B. Yep. I mean, SZA is at a few of them and Cardi's yep. at one of them. But like, it doesn't change anything, honestly, at the end no. of the day, even though they're there. Yeah, and like Haim was a uh, a female rock band that was on pace to possibly move into that sphere. Uh, their album also was uh, I wouldn't say a dud, but it was middling. So that that's not getting anyone excited to see Haim this year. Fleetwood mm-hmm. Mac could be a generational talent, you know, that could possibly headline, but they haven't really been headlining except for the like the classic East or the classic West. So it's it's hard to say right now who could really be jumping into these spots and really dominating or, or getting those, those upper tier bookings. So uh, it's a hard situation though, because especially with the whole climate of Hollywood right now and, and music as part of that, you want to be moving towards uh, giving people shine that deserve to have their shine. And right now it doesn't seem like music festivals are moving that way. Yeah. I mean, look at governor's ball, uh, you know, about halfway down the, on, down the poster, uh, Kalela's there. And her album was a huge critical hit, right? Yep. Uh, Let me know. It's a great song. But, you know, again, there's not enough pull in. If you listen to, you know, like people from Founders or any of like the big festival organizers, Live Nation, whoever it may be, they'll kind of tell you that they understand. There's no doubt that there's a diversity problem, a gender diversity problem. But at the same point, it's a business and there needs to be the artist available. They have to both want to be, you know, doing the festivals and also be hot enough or in demand enough to warrant being booked so i don't know i think i think just saying that there's not enough female you know acts in that vein i feel like that's a that's like not the answer anyone wants to hear and it's not totally true but it's probably a factor to some degree unfortunately if you had to pick one of these festivals to go to i'm guessing it would probably be coachella taking that taking that right, table between governor's ball yeah. boston calling firefly Bonnaroo, shaky knees. I, I don't think you're gonna pick shaky knees. Um, <laughs> what, why? Why you say that? <laughs> which one would you go to? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Fact, discounting uh, when they occur, because uh, I won't go to Boston Calling, even though it, it's Memorial where Day I live. Yeah. Where I live, yeah. I like to think big on Memorial Day, so I probably won't go to that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's tough. I went so I went to Governor's Ball in Meadows last year. Uh, Meadows and Lala, Oshiega, all the later year festival lineups aren't out yet, but we'll uh, chime in on those when they do drop. But uh, yeah, for, for these major ones that are out now, uh, you know, because they're so similar, it really like I'm not I'm not excited about seeing Eminem, but he's at all of them, and I've you know I've seen Kendrick before. It's probably Governor's Ball just because I've never seen Travis and I've really wanted to see him, and he has such a great live reputation. Mm-hmm. Um. But I mean, after, I mean, you know, I'm there for the Rock first, but he also has with him, you know, Little Uzi Vert. I've seen him. Brockhampton. I'll be seeing them soon. Two Chains. I've seen him. Like Jay Electronica, Amina, and Vic Mensa are the other rappers on that lineup that, are, that I haven't seen. So like, I don't know. Like, none of these get, would inspire me to get a three day pass. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and you know, I think this is also a problem. Is as more and more people are going to festivals, I think it becomes less and less intriguing because you're not seeing as many new acts that you want to see because you've seen a lot mm-hmm. of them before. Um, for me, if I had to pick one, I, it would probably be, I mean, if, if there was nothing else involved in the timing, I'd probably do Boston Calling just because that those first like four lines uh, just speak to me <laughs> in, in my, my personal taste. Um, but I don't know. Firefly, I think I might grab a day pass, especially because I've heard rumors that they might stack Kendrick and Arctic Monkeys. And if that's the case, like buying a day pass and just seeing those two is totally mm-hmm. worth, you know, like the 100 and what, 20, 30 bucks it would cost. Uh, right. I don't know, man. I feel like you look at all these lineups, you could definitely build a festival that you really want to go to if you combine them. Like Bonnaroo is the only one that has Anderson Pack. Right. That- bums me and, out you and, know and sergio simpson like that would be a great booking anywhere else 
and Coachella is the only one with Cardi B or Vince Staples. You know, like if those, like yeah, you, you like my taste, your taste, anyone's taste. There, there was definitely, it was definitely in play to have like the perfect, perfect one. But alas, we don't have it. Right. So it's it's gonna be a uh, an interesting year. Festivals. It'll be interesting how the lineups play into their success um mm-hmm. one that i wanted to shout out that i wish i could go to mad cool uh fest in madrid uh the headliners are pearl jam arctic monkeys jack white depeche mode with the second tier being tame impala nine inch nails and allison chains so wow. if you want to, if you want to go see a good rock festival and money's not an option for you go see <laughs> that festival you're not going to get catch a better lineup in america this year um yeah in in terms of hip-hop i'm still holding out for the second iteration of rolling loud down in miami because last yeah. year's was ridiculous and now they have more money so i assume it's going to be really cool again so you don't we'll want to go to japan uh rolling loud japan yeah uh probably not <laughs> <laughs> i gotta shout them though they had rolling loud bay area rolling loud socal as well as the miami one now they, they announced the japan one it'll be back in miami so uh quick risers for sure Definitely. Well, when you get a lineup like like they had in Miami last year, you're gonna draw people in. 